Hey guys, welcome back to another video. So like I said in my last video, I'd be covering any content released by Interpret Studios and as of this recording anyway, yesterday was the 16th and on their official Discord, they released an article covering notes. So like they said previously, March would be the month covering the node system. And basically what they said was that over the next few days, the next few weeks, they're gonna lay it out where um, they'll be releasing new articles covering different areas of the node system, starting with the basic all the way to the complex systems. Anyway, let's get into this. So anyway, know your nodes, the basics. So like I said, they're covering from start to finish. So, okay then, right, where do we begin? So welcome to the Know Your Node series. Okay, oh, it's a series, I should have said that. In this series, we'll be going all over the aspects of nodes and ashes of creation from the basics all the way to how government elections take place per node type. Okay, I believe there are four node types, we'll find out later on. To kick off the series, we're going back to the basics. As a disclaimer, we want to know that our game is still in development, very true. So all design decisions are subject to change during our alphas and betas. Okay. With that in mind, this series will be will outline our current design plan for nodes. Okay. I like how they got little designs here for different buildings that we have the option to build if it ever gets through past beta, but we'll find out. Obviously there's gonna be like hundreds of these of different like for different races. So uh what are nodes? Oh, okay. They got this from the um, this image from the original video for the part one and part two nodes. Anyway, nodes are the heart of the world. They create the ebb and flow of life. At their core, nodes are preset points in the world. Wrapped in a zone of influence, so these things here, these, these markers, they indicate a ZO, ZOI, zone of influence, and surrounded by geographic areas that change over time based upon player participation. Awesome. The world map is divided into regions, with each region containing multiple nodes. Okay. As a node advances, it influences the types of content within itself and the surrounding area. Alright, players do not create nodes, but if they are part of the government for a specific node, they have the ability to influence diplomacy and modify buildings, types and structures and services within that node. Okay, ooh, this is, this is new. There will be 103 node locations at launch each with its own impact on the narrative and development of the world. While well, considering the map will be 480 square kilometers, 103 seems about reasonable if you think about it. Okay, I like that. So what, you know, whatever we do in the zone of influence will go towards the actual node, it'll gain experience and a bunch of other stuff. You'll find out more as we go along. Exactly here, how do they work? Seven stages? Ah, okay, level zero, that's new. Nodes have seven stages and experience threshold thresholds for each stage. As players complete content inside or around a node, they contribute an equal amount of experience toward that node's development. An equal amount? I'd say that's quite OP. I figured it would have been like, say if you could hand in a quest, 20% of that would go towards the node, like as a copy. 100%. That's interesting, because I know level 6 metropolises, to get to them, they take weeks if not months. So I want to see how they do that. Anyway, um, when a node reaches the experience required for its current stage, so here's an example, almost level one expedition, it advances to the next stage node. There are seven, yeah, so level level zero, wildness, expedition, camp, village, town, city, metropolis. Okay. At each stage, a node contains a certain default infrastructures. These include base merchants, NPCs, core services and buildings, walls, and defenses. Okay, well, you know, obviously we want guards and all that. We'll go into more detail how to build, de-level, and destroy a node in a later article. Yeah, like they said, they'd be releasing it in like stages, not all in one compact article, which I wouldn't want. Right, here we go, node types. So there are four here. So all nodes in the world are assigned to a node type that affects the node government system, available services, narrative, amen amenities, amenities, and the types of NPCs and buildings that spawn at each node level. Okay, there are four, four node types, each which contains several unique specializations. So we have the economic node, which specializes in trade and merchant focuses, the military node, which specializes in combat and clashing focuses. For me, I probably go military because I just like 
you know, end game content and I obviously want to upgrade my class and so on and so forth. Scientific nodes, so that's for like crafting, artisan and construction focuses. So that could be good for like castle sieges. And then the divine node, which I think is a religious type of thing. Faith, skill, like, oh, and equipment augment focuses. So it, in, it, strength, it strengthens it. Okay, I didn't see that coming. Interesting. So each node type will be easily identifi identifiable at node level one as the area propagates. NPCs will come into areas based on node type. So if we're an economic node, we get merchants. So I want to see how they do that. Military, so guards. So better for defense. Scientific scholars. Maybe more crafting trees, perhaps. And then divine, which are priests. I don't know what the priests offer. Node types are predetermined and are the same across the servers and are the same across all servers. A node's type is static and does not change based on node's level or destruction. So, for example, if a level 4 scientific node is destroyed, it will become a level 0 scientific node. Okay, that's good. It will never be any other node type other than a scientific node. The location of these types relates to the influence of the area around the node. Huh. So what we do in the zone of influence will affect what type of node we have. So if you craft and all that, it'll become a crafting node. And if you, I don't know what how it's going to happen with the military, but obviously I'm always going to go military. It's just how I am. It's in my blood. See, this is what I want to know, because um, on the wiki, it talks about um, parent and child nodes, which in other in this case is actually called the vassal nodes. So anyway, beginning at node stage three, uh, when a node advances, it enslaves, here we go, parent child, it enslaves nearby nodes and makes them into vassals, into its vassals. Vassal nodes are owned by a parent node, see, must always be at least one node stage below the parent node. This means that the vassal node cannot grow until the parent node advances in stage. Okay. Vassal nodes give excess experience to their parent node, oh that's good, and are able to have their own vassals. So grandchildren, awesome. As long as they fit within the parent node's zone of influence, oh, okay then, that's good. They are subject to the government alliances, wars, taxes, and trade of the parent node, and are able to receive federal aid from them. A vassal node cannot declare war on their parent node or any of any of its vassals, since the vassals are bind, bound by the diplomatic states of the parent node. So really, if you want to, there can only be so many metropolis stages nodes anyway. And once there, I think max is five or six per server. And once there are five or six, like a level five node can now go to a level six because it's at max. And you really want your stage to level to grow to this stage six, the only way for you to do that is to destroy a level six metropolis node. But if you're a vassal of a level six, you can't do anything about it. So you've got to rely on enemies from other zones of influence to, or regions to deal with that. And then content, uh, which is near the end, unfortunately. All quests, dungeons, raids, events, ooh, I like all the quests, NPC spawns, resources, and narratives are determined by both the node stage and the influential race. Additionally, the layout and architecture within a, node, within a node's development area are determined by influential race. We don't know much about the race. We know some about the race, but not enough. For example, a stage three node with a majority of player contribution being Pyre, which I think are elves, would have Pyre village with Pyre architecture. Most NPCs will, yeah, here we go. Most NPCs would be Pyre Owls and offer quest lines within the Pyre narrative. I apologize if I'm saying that wrong. A node stage also affects player government. Player government becomes available at stage three and mayors gain new powers and responsibilities as a node advances. I know what separates mayor, mayor players from the average player and what this is, for example, a player as a mayor or a king, they might be able to gain a dragon which no other player can get. And that dragon grows, it has abilities, but also said that mounts die, which is quite new and creative to the MMORPG genre. So every node is given perfu over a predefined geographic area called a zone of influence, COI for short. No matter where you go in the world, whenever you're getting, whenever you're questing, gathering, or raiding, yes, raiding, you'll be helping determine which nodes will develop, what zones of influence will expand, any area that a node controls is considered its zone of influence, including vassal nodes, and all vassal nodes exist within the zone of influence of the parent node. 
Okay. Ashif creation will be a living, breathing, reactive world where actions will shape the zones of influence, leveling nodes to form massive cities and create the story of the world that everyone experiences. In the next, oh, here we go. In the next Know Your Nodes article, we'll dive deep into how to advance, build, and destroy a node, sieges. So stay tuned. We'll also be releasing the first video in our Dev Diaries series later this month that explores the tech behind these systems. I want to see that. They'll take you behind the scenes of what will be one of the most revolu revolutionary systems in the MMORPG. Yes, that's what we want. Remember, yep, yeah, okay, so that's pretty much it, guys. So we got, a bit, we got a better idea of how it all works now, just a bit, even though it's just the basic stuff. Um, I did want to know about more about vassal nodes. and I, You know, they did deliver, so that's good. I didn't know that you can have grandchildren, being like parent node, vassal node, and then minor vassal node, if you want to call it. See, this thing here, divine, right? Uh, in the wiki, we knew about the specializations for each of these types, except for divine. Divine was blank, but now it's been confirmed that it will be priests. So that's good to know. Got a lot of information. Nice to know that there will be 103 nodes at the start on a server, I think, if that's like the a general, gen, the generic number. Um, I'm impressed. I'm glad that they're releasing these articles. I'm glad they're making more posts on their website. You know, the other day they released content talking about castle sieges, which were looked amazing and, you know, very creative. And I hope, you know, I hope this, they keep this up. I, I wonder what they're going to do after the nodes. Hopefully more class designs, mounts, mo like they did say in the, the de developer live stream. Whenever they have a model available, they'd release that too. So, uh, yeah. So it's a shame that in the developer live stream, we were informed that the game will be delayed for some time. <laughs> But, you know, we want this MMO done right, right? Though so things really are looking up with these two recent articles, the Castle Siege and the No System, and of course, with the Dev Diaries coming up as well. Really, there were only three days between the articles, so I'm hoping they keep it up. It's it's a good start. Maybe two articles a week would be amazing. If if more, then, you know, I'm, I'm over the moon. All right, guys, that was the video. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, make sure to hit the like button down below. Make sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell for more content on the channel. Thank you.